I'd like to welcome you to the Barnstone Studios. This is the first class of nine in what we call a foundation in drawing and design course. Anyone studying with me here at the studios is encouraged to take it twice if they wish to continue studying with me because what I don't do is discuss foundation information in advanced classes. I'm the sole instructor so I can dictate what the sequence of classes are, when people are ready to move forward, and I know when they come into one of my advanced classes that they're familiar with everything they should be familiar with so that we can concentrate on portraiture or figure drawing or painting, whatever it happens to be. Universities today are such that when I last taught at a university, I would get se seniors coming to me saying, you know, I regret that I didn't take foundation drawing in my freshman year, but I need it now as a credit to graduate. But they've been through foundation courses with no training. It's really a mess. So here we're doing it the way it used to be done, a one-man school in a tradition that's as old as the apprentice master system, and it's worked. And once you start to work in this idiom, what you discover is that you don't have any choices. Things simply fall into place, and you see what has to be done because somehow you've inherited an understanding of what re what's required for the beginning student. I never thought through this curriculum, it just happened. I stood alone in a painter's studio for 35 years, and when I came out, I knew what students needed first, second, and third, and I proceeded over the last 31 years to refine my ability to communicate this information to the beginner. Now, I know we have graduates of major universities and academies in this class. I know we have people who are pushing older numbers. I know we have a 14-year-old in this class. But what we're primarily concerned with is assuming that none of you have a background in the information I'm going to offer, and I'm going to proceed to offer you a beginning, a middle, and an end in a foundation program. First thing I'd like to say is that art is not about the appearance of those objects artists draw. Art is not about appearance. The artist chooses his motif, his subject, and from it <clears throat> he selects that which interests him, he exaggerates it, he refines it, he distorts it, he organizes and formalizes it on a system of design, he does a great deal to it. And for this reason, if his tool chest is full of enough devices and systems, he and whoever's sitting beside him drawing the same subject will choose different devices, different systems, and approach it based on his own appetites or her own desires. And in this way, no two artists work similarly. But culturally, they have a lot in common. Chinese 19th century painters would all work in an idiom that wouldn't look like 19th century French or German. So we inherit certain traditional movements and philosophies and systems. African artists are using all the systems that the West is using, the golden section and all kinds of formalized systems as well. However, their purposes are different, very different. So let's assume that drawing is a mark-making code. Musical notation is a mock-making code. So too is the skill and code used by a choreographer or a football coach. Hmm? All of these people are making marks. And let's look at the limited alphabet of marks that artists use, because it's extremely limited. It's extremely limited. <laughs> we start out with essentially five. We've got a point which simply establishes location. We've got a horizontal line, we've got a diagonal line, and we have a vertical line, and we have an arc, a curve. Now the interesting thing here really is that only two of those marks are found in nature. The dot, there's spots all over everything in nature, and curves, there are no straight lines in nature. So right from the beginning, artists understood that what they were doing <coughs> was abstract. Those three lines don't occur. There are no straight lines in nature, none. And yet you're going to see that the artist uses straight lines far more often than he uses curves. 
because you can formalize, you can measure, you can inflect, you can relate straight lines more easily than you can curves. Curves pre present all kinds of complications. So we have these marks, and each one, if you give them some thought, represent a mood. If you were to design a piece, sculpture, painting, drawing, with the dominant direction being the horizontal, it would be calm, it would be relaxed, it would be quiet. It's already a mood. The diagonal is phallic. The diagonal is masculine. The diagonal looks like somebody charging with a lance. Hmm? It's aggressive. It's much more powerful than the vertical or the horizontal. So if you have <clears throat> the charge of the light brigade, you're going to be basing it on the diagonal. The vertical isn't quite as stable as the horizontal. It's much less active than the vertical, but it's balanced. It's ordered. It's upright. Christ in his glory is vertical. Hmm? Many a portrait is vertical. The curve is a, an enclosure. It cups, it holds, it relates. You're going to hear the word relate a great deal in this class. So if we do a design based on one of these basic directions, we would say the relationship between each of the elements in our drawing would be that they're of the same family. They're organic. We can introduce one or two other directions, but we're going to have to be very careful that we don't violate the mood established by the horizontal or the vertical or the diagonal. Now we can strengthen a line by introducing its perpendicular, a line that intersects it at 90 degrees. But we want to be careful that we don't lose our dominant direction with the subordinate. We've got points. So we have a point here and a point there. That gives us a horizontal line. We really don't need the line connecting them because we've been connecting dots ever since we were infants looking at the night sky. We know little dippers and big dippers and this and that. And parents used to keep us busy connecting the dots on long trips. So the beginning and the end of a line is more important than the line connecting it. And if we take a horizontal, we can turn it into a horizontal rectangle. A di diagonal becomes a triangle or it becomes a cone. The vertical can be a, hor a vertical rectangle and the curve becomes a circle. So we now have I anticipated myself. This shouldn't be here. We now have two dimensional figures. We've got a point, we've got a line, we've got a direction, and now we have two dimensional figures, and we can turn those two dimensional figures into three dimensional figures. And now we have our cone, or we can introduce a pyramid.